Rob, Alex and Ben. It's Rita. Hello everyone and welcome to Warford Weekly, your weekly EastEnders podcast, where this week we'll be discussing the episodes released on BBC in the UK from Monday the 29th of August to Thursday the 1st of September 2022. Also on iPlayer as well, but not as a box set, as we wrongly said was happening this week. No box sets this week. Yes, Naughty Rob, Naughty Rob. Uh, my name is Alex and I am joined by the aforementioned Rob. Hello, Rob. How are you? Hello, everybody. Hello, Alexander. How are you this week? Oh, uh, it's nice, isn't it, to have it back in terms of TV and what, because well, I've been mean, what a week to do it on as well. It's very right. exciting, it's very, very exciting stuff. Isn't it? Very the exciting. build up for oh, the big, big weeks coming and up. Bet, and I bet you can't wait to hear our thoughts on next week's episodes, can you? What a build up we've got. A massive week that's next week. <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, do you know what? Next week, I cannot wait to tune into Warford Weekly and hear what they have got to say in our normal next week slot. I bet they can't wait for that, can they, Alex? Well, sadly, they're going to have to wait, Ben. Uh, sorry, Ben. Rob. Rob, my goodness. <laughs> is, that, is that a divorce I see coming on the horizon? <laughs> goodness me. Uh, no, they are going to have to wait. And they're going to have to wait for Ben for even longer. But they're going to have to wait for us to so for a couple of rubbish. weeks. Because rubbish. sadly, life has gotten in the way. Uh, we, but Ben and I are moving. Mm. And we cannot record a podcast next week. How? So... We will be back in two weeks' time. We'll repeat all this at the end of the show as well. So don't worry, don't worry. But yes, but do, do, obviously there's don't other ways to put up a fight. Get. Do not think I didn't put up a fight for this. I tried. <laughs> but but, but you know we're not. You know there's other ways you can get in touch with us. There's our uh, Twitter at Wolford Weekly. We've got our Facebook group. Just search Wolford Weekly Podcast. And you can follow us on all kinds of social media on TikTok and on Instagram as well. So we're not gone. Are we on TikTok? We're just having a. We are on TikTok. Did are you we? not know? No, yes. No. <laughs> I haven't got TikTok. <laughs> oh, you should. TikTok's great. I did a video about TikTok. Did you? Yes, I did about EastEnders TikToks. Uh, now, put a little link at the top of the screen. Don't forget to finish watching the podcast first. I'm not in it. So don't, yeah, wait, well. I'm not in that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, it's so we're going to, uh, very quickly, because we have much mm. to discuss this week, we're going to change the dot because <gasps> we are now in September. Alex. Excellent. Ah. Just to remind everyone also that if you're not watching this on YouTube, you're missing out because this you're not going to see the this dot This is change. your favourite bit, isn't it, people who just listened? This is the best yes. bit of the month. <laughs> Uh, right, so works so well in audio. Works so well in audio. Works doesn't work that great in visual, to be fair, because mm. it always falls apart. But I mean. here we are then. So we have gone from August, say goodbye to the close-up of Pretty Baby, Pretty Baby, to the big old month that is September, one of EastEnders' favourite months of the year, and to accompany this massive month of EastEnders for all yes, of this month, yes, we yes. have... Oh! oh. Now that... Okay. All right, so that, I believe, is probably going... So we've got a picture of Dot and Nick, but this is later. I believe that this might be when um, Dottie first appeared. I think around 2008, 2009. You're maybe. entirely correct. Yes. That's the publicity shots Christmas, for that. Didn't they? Mm. That's right, that's Sorry, right. Yes, know. that's Dottie's reappears and his nice little <clears throat> check shirt there. Yes, where he's, Merry he's Christmas said, bar. Yeah, Merry Christmas bar. bar. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. fantastic. Oh, I mean, like I say, if you're not watching us on YouTube right now, um, then you're missing out because you could be watch looking at, <laughs> yet again, Rob's calendar destroying itself from within. Since the beginning of this year, when we've been doing John the Dot, when we've been looking at Rob's calendar, yes. Rob's calendar has just slowly fallen apart. You know I I would... just, by the time we get to December, it's going to be one <laughs> little sheet that just hangs on the wall. <laughs> it's that, because it yeah, doesn't, torn. like, when you take it out, it doesn't hang on afterwards. It's just, it's just rubbish. But there oh. we go. That's, um, that's September. Sad quality. So that's are. what you get when there you buy a bootleg. You need to buy an official BBC merchandise calendar. Well, if you they still make calendars, I would. I don't um, think right. They do. I just wanted to very quickly discuss something, Alex, because yes. um, as I have mentioned on the podcast a few times, um, I'm currently going through the 2008-2009 reruns on iPlayer. And last night I got to um, uh, Peggy and Archie's wedding and Danielle's death. Oh, oh. And where else better it's to geek sad. about it? Where else better to sort of go to wax lyrical about something that's related to East Anderson on the podcast? My God, that episode rips your heart out. It I really know, does. it's heartbreaking, isn't it? Obviously, I've seen that death scene hundreds of millions of times because it, it shows up on any clip show of East Enders ever. But you, I can't remember like watching the build up to it before. Like that whole wedding episode is insane. An hour long Simon Ashdown episode. What what more could I want in life <laughs> for a start? But if you like, you know, you look at the 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 units of the Mitchells. Uh, that's the Mitchells, you know, great. You know, you've got the, mm. the two sisters. Thank you, Sean O'Connor. You've got Phil. You've got Peggy. You've got Archie there. 
this big old wedding. Peggy was practically in charge of the square at that point. Everyone respected Peggy, so the whole square has turned out for the wedding. And Danielle just running around with his ticking time bomb wait, waiting to explode. To I know, this big Archie. secret. And then she finally reveals a secret, and then she gets brutally run down by poor Janine, to be fair, actually. Janine did not deserve that to happen to her. <laughs> really, really sad. <laughs> poor Janine just driving around, minding her own business, and then Danielle just appears in front of her, and she kills her. I know, I know. And the scream, the actual scream oh. from Ronnie when she she, she sees it happen it's in front so, of her. I cried. They, cried. I don't know what happened. I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> I cannot imagine. I can't, like, I remember being furious when that first aired. Like, why, how could you do this to Ronnie? But if you think of, if you watch it now in the run up to it, and <clears throat> with, with knowing what's about to happen, you kind of think there's no other way the story could have ended other than Daniel's horrific death. Uh, yeah, I mean, they could have given Ronnie a little bit of time with her daughter before they killed yeah. her off. The only thing I would say is, Archie, as a villain, how mad is this, right? Archie, one of the most remembered EastEnders villains of all time, right? Like, if you, if you name me three EastEnders villains, Archie is going to be said by everybody. Doesn't kill a single person in his whole tenure. No, he's just manipulative. That's mad, isn't, he? isn't it? That's mad, mm. isn't it? Like, mm. you, you, can you think of any other any other soak villain that doesn't kill somebody at some point to be seen as a memorable villain? Well, it's funny. It's funny <clears throat> you say about Archie because we'll be talking about it at the end of the show because there's yes. been some big news this week Good as well, link, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. And and I've got a feeling. And a little spoiler from my views here. I've got a feeling that a new character that's being introduced might be a little Archie esque. Ooh. I've just got a feeling, I've got an inkling inside, I've got a little Ooh. tickle, a little tickle. Just... But I would be fascinated to know uh, in the comments section or on any of our social media outlets, um, your thoughts on that episode, <laughs> including, you know, TikTok. including TikTok apparently, Alex loves to tell me what's been said. Um, but if you know your memories of that episode, because it's it's one of EastEnders' most memorable moments, isn't it? Like the run mm. the run up to it. Daniel's death. What were your thoughts on it? If you remember, or if you've seen it recently, let me know in the comment section below. Oh, I cried, cried. I don't know what mm. happened. Oh, it's and heartbreaking. You, you know whose view I'd be very interested in hearing? I'd be very interested in hearing Rita Simmons' view because we know you're Simons. listening, Rita. <laughs> Simon, sorry. <laughs> Goodness me, oh, it's all gone wrong today, hasn't so it? You're Ben. Rubbish. I can't. I am so rubbish. rubbish. Sorry, I apologise. I apologise, Peter. But we know you're brains, listening. You? <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. No. Hello, hello, hello. Because we played at the top of the show. We got a thank you for our message. Oh, thank uh, you so from much. From Trent this week, from Rita, uh, to, to, you know, say hello to what? us. Um, that was lovely. A lovely uh, gift oh, from Trent. Thank you so nice much. Again, surprise. if you go to our Twitter, you'll be able to see it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'd be interested to know what Rita has to say as well. Thank you. Um, and how she thinks about me just messing the whole beginning of this episode so far. Oh, she spits on you if she sees you in the street. I do. That's, that's I wouldn't blame her. I wouldn't bl- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you, like you, I loved that episode so much with um, mm. uh, with Ronnie. But I did, I, I, like, I just felt so heartbreaking that they took something away oh, from her so quickly, and that's honestly, all they seem to do with Ronnie. That's like honestly, Ronnie was just built to be this, this, this machine tragic. to just have everything yeah, yeah, tragically taken away from her. I mean, yeah. uh, you get a lot of people that ask, um, you know, what is an image that, may, like, you know, that just says EastEnders to you from all the show? And they, do you, you know the promo shot of Danielle standing in the road looking out at, the, obviously, the car headlights heading towards mm. her? That, to me, is EastEnders. Because you just look at mm. it and you think, oh, <laughs> you know, it's so tragic and gritty and urban and horror and horrifying. And that's 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 the one. That's the one for that's me. That's the one. That's the Lovely. one. Lovely. We right, well, I suppose we better start talking we about well, what's yes. happened. Well, we're kind of talking about the past because we're now talking about what's just happened, more more recent past, what's just happened on the show, and our theories of what could happen. As we're going to now talk about the whole show. So, the first story we're going to talk about this week is with Linda and her court case and Janine's continued manipulation. So much to the point that she's basically torn someone away from the square and they've left, never to be seen again, which has kind of rocked the boat. A little bit also in Sharon's court because but Sharon, not too, much. <laughs> not too much, but yeah, that's what I mean. They kind of didn't really mention it very much, which I thought was a shame. Sharon had that one comment. It's like, well, you've also just taken away my grandson, but don't mm. worry about that, Linda. I'll still be. And I felt, do you think Linda was being a bit, a bit selfish because Jada did run away. Jada ran away with Alyssa this week because she just couldn't cope with what she had done to Linda. Yeah. Uh, by the manipulation of Janine in a weird kind of like Janine manipulated her, but not very well, really, if you think about it in the grand scheme of things. And now Linda's kind of really obsessing over what what's happened to her. And I just felt a bit sorry for Sharon this week as well. Yeah. And the thing is with this story, now I think with all Jan- with a lot of Janine stories, okay, where Janine is being the villain in a role and she's sort of, you know, you're sort of watching, waiting for Janine to get her comeuppance. You know, there's been a few of those sorts of stories over the years. 
And the majority of them, you kind of just, there's a lot of times where you sort of just go, oh, do you know what? This is whatever. Fun. I'll just go along for the ride because it's a Jadine story. It's going to be high octane. It's going to be drama, you know. Not necessarily sort of everybody acting like they should do. Some Sometimes these stories are sort of like, some characters have to act like idiots for the story to continue, you know. Sometimes you get <laughs> stories like that. The problem is with this week, Jada's exit didn't really I, i'm going to miss jada for a start i think it's massively wasted potential because i think that the actress was great proper stood up this week you know she, you know you've got when you've got an actress a pretty young actress kind of doing scenes with the likes of charlie brooks and tishy ding you know kelly bright um and holding her own perfectly you sort of think oh why are you going you're really good um and that was really evident this week and it did sort and the story kind of it, it was kind of like the for me, the story, the, the Janine and Linda story has been great fun, but I think this week it sort of tripped over itself trying to accommodate Jada's exit because Jada had to leave, mm -hmm. you know, and it was sort of like, <clears throat> because there's a few elements to it. Like, you know, so obviously Janine has manipulated Jada, um, made her ring the social. For a start, you kind of think, well, seeing as though that phone call was obviously um, not unanimous, what's the word? anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> um, the phone call was actually uh, anonymous. You kind of think, well, couldn't Janine have just rang the social herself? It's not like she's not done that before, you know. Um, yeah. So there is that. Um, and then, you know, as there was kind of a few opportunities of this week, especially seeing as though she knew she was leaving when Jada said, yeah, by the way, it was Janine. Because obviously I've, I've I've confessed to what I've done, so why would I now protect Janine? You know, well, no, she so didn't know. She didn't confess to the same Janine. No, she that's, never what said I mean. she, that's, that's what I yeah. mean. And, and oh, she should, have, she should have done, really. Should have especially done, Especially yeah. once she confessed her part in it. Well, um, I wondered why right, I'm but, leaving. So, but that's so. So I wondered if they kind of put that in because last week she wouldn't admit it was Stuart, and so it was like that's Jada's character. So I, they kind of did it as like yeah. a, that's what Jada does. Yeah, but, but like you being, say, why? Yeah, yeah. But the difference being though that she was obviously trying to be kind of like she's the Stuart thing was her basically saying, well, do you know what? That's none of my business. You know, clearly mm. Stuart's got issues. That's not for me to go around grassing him up about. Which was a very sort of I liked that in, in Jada's character. That was a really nice moment for her. This wasn't quite the same thing though because no. because Janine was kind of actively manipulating her and trying to get her into trouble and trying to and basically get letting her take all the flack and at no point really did Jada think about actually just saying well it's Janine because Janine had this recording that really sort of implicated her just as much as it did Jada so yes. ja, so ja, the only thing I can really think is ja, you've got to also remember that Jada is a young kid you know yes. and realistically Moldable. could a young kid really take down someone like Janine you know Janine could eat kids for breakfast in that in that respect you know she's never she really gets kids <laughs> she does um, Coco so, kids. yeah so you know it's a shame I think it was just I think it was more about the fact that Jada had to leave and it kind of had to be slotted a little bit sort of like this is you know, kind of slot that into the story, made it trip up itself up a little bit. But I am going to miss Jada because I think she was a great character. Mm. She's she's gone on a bus, you know. She's gone to see her auntie, um, and yes. so there is there is potential for us to go. I love the fact that you know she went on a bus. Zach followed her, and um, Jada told him, oh, "Well, I'm going to my auntie's. All right, so that's where I'm going. I'm going on this bus." Um, and then kind of <laughs> Sharon was kind of, "Oh, she's gone. She's gone." Because none of us have been axed and we can't leave the square and follow her. We're, no. we're trapped here. Jada's gone. <laughs> God forbid we do an ex 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 shot don't, outside the square. Yes, Goodness they, can't, they don't leave the square, do they? Um, so it's, yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> I think I think I'm going I'm to miss Jada. There was a line this week I thought you might appreciate where Jada said, well, you can't just replace one person with another, which effectively was, has been the whole of this story by Fidelity, really. Isn't yeah. it? I thought you yeah, might enjoy that line. <laughs> I thought you might. <clears throat> You're lucky. I, 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 I did spot <laughs> that. Um, I thought you might. Yeah, I just think it's kind of, it's, by taking Jada away, it's kind of the implications of it. I, I don't think has been quite, quite shown just yet because Sharon must show more emotion about that one scene where she said, "Well, you know, don't forget me, Linda. This happened yeah. to me as well." Yeah, and like Linda, but then Linda kind of was like, "Oh yeah, I'm sorry." Anyway, I'm off to do, and then yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. you know, so you know, I feel like this, this would have been more of a more of a barrier between the friendship between Linda more conflict and, between, a conflict between and more conflict yeah, yeah, between yeah. them than they're actually shown. And I well, think in a way, yeah. maybe if they had shown that, that would have made, it would be nice to see like Sharon and Linda kind of had this conflict and then just seeing Sharon, um, Janine in the background kind of rubbing her hands together going, oh, yeah, I an mean, unexpected turn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there were some nice moments with the story on this week. You know, it wasn't all bad. You know, there was, it's, you know, it's just that part felt a little bit awkward, but there were some great moments in this story hmm. on this week, you know. Um, I really liked the scene where Linda was kind of stuck. Well, yes, we'll come to that in a second. Um, but we, because <laughs> yes, that bit was quite that was amazing. amazing. It was an amazing moment. <laughs> um, but what I quite liked, you know, in regards to sort of talking about um, Sharon and Linda's relationship, was the fact that Sharon, you know, Linda was kind of sat there in the living room, ranting and raving, saying, "Well, you've clearly reported me. What have you has? What have you has?" Um, and Sharon at one point did turn around and go, uh, "Do you know what? Actually, 
this hasn't been easy for any of us. You have been a nightmare to live with and yeah, we've stuck by. Yes, that was a great yes, moment, actually. And yes. kind of Linda was kind of like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm really <laughs> so that was a great moment. So it sort of felt quite real for all of the characters to say, you know, Martin kind of like, I've got kids here and you're a raging alcoholic. That hasn't been easy for us, any of us to deal with. And Linda's kind of like, right, okay, fair enough. I'll stop shouting ah, at you. Yeah. Maybe one minute so, in. Yeah, so that was nice. But then, yes, there was an, another great moment this week where Linda sort of worked out Janine was doing Janine type things, stormed over to the big and absolutely lamped on one in the face. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? It really I just didn't fun. really I didn't well done punch. It. No, it was a brilliant I. punch. Brilliant punch. Really good punch. You, just now and again, you get a punch where you just go, ah, oh, and mm. that was one of those moments because some punches look rubbish and that one didn't look rubbish. That one looked amazing. So yeah. it was so well choreographed because really I think well the, choreographed. the last few times they've kind of had like Linda fighting. They had that fight with Shirley and it looked awful. Kind of, kind of went. And pause, and then they went to the shot with them, kind of. You know, the the flow of it looked amazing, and the fact that it was a punch and not a slap as well, I loved that. That's how angry like she Linda, was. You know the you know exactly. the characters. You know the female characters are angry when they punch instead yeah, of slap. Yeah. <laughs> they take that hand and they clench it up. They clenshore it up, and then they give him a smack around the Get face. Out. Get out! That, <laughs> Get out. <laughs> that was a clenshore claw punch. Yeah, I loved it. Loved, loved, loved that, that scene, and it's. And uh, yeah, and I just, I just, I love the animosity between Linda and Janine. And as you said, yeah. I just love the fact that they, everyone seems to be saying like, you know, we are treading around you lightly here, Linda. But mm. You need to remember that a lot of these things, and it, you know, Janine quite rightly said a lot of these things kind of were brought on by yourself. But obviously, Which, no one deserves what Janine has also is, kind of yeah, then no. extended to do. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know. So there is, uh, yeah. My my basic things about all this is it was a shame with the Jada stuff, you know, and it, there was a little bit of sort of like ignoring uh, bits of logic to accommodate an a, a, an ex a character that needed to leave at that point. So you know mm. that sort of maybe drag proceedings down a little bit, and it's a shame that Jada had to leave in the first place because actually I think she's, she was quite good. So that's yeah. a shame, but. Everything else regarding this, no issues whatsoever. Like I said, I love this whole Linda and Janine rivalry. Um, and I think actually it's, it's showing that pres pre presuming that both Janine and Linda are still around after Mick leaves. Because Mick really, even though the rivalry is basically about Mick, Mick hasn't yeah, been that heavily, it, hasn't really been <laughs> heavily involved in it really, has he? He's sort of just kind of nodded along and gone, right, yes, yeah, 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 I love you, Janine. I love you too, Elle. Yeah, yeah, And not really sort of been that heavily involved in it. It's more been about mm. the women. Which kind of to me shows that, that Linda is going to be more than capable of being her own character once Mick has gone. So that's been a sort of nice warm up to that. Um, so I, and I look forward to sort of seeing where Janine and Linda are after Mick leaves in terms of, you know, their rivalry. It's not like they're ever going to be friends after all of this because no. how could you? So no. it's, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to sort of seeing where it goes after that. Mm. I mean, concerning that this, this seems to be the way that Mick is exiting, as you quite rightly be. said. It has to be. Mick doesn't seem to have a lot of involvement with it just really yet. So, so, clearly, so clearly they need to kind of intertwine him in there somehow. I mean, he does yeah. move, sorry, the, the story does move on then in the la la later part of the week where Janine decides to move into the Vic or manipulates her way into the Vic. She's um, back, back in the Vic. Back. We see Scarlett, she's back as well, just sitting at the table doing her own work. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, but the, the main story was that Ollie and Frankie were looking at some past pictures mm -hmm. and Ollie, Detective Ollie, I'm telling Bless you, him. Ollie's going to solve Bless the case. He, he picked two photographs and one of them is that photograph from the 7th of June, which was taken when uh, Janine threw the clothes into the bin behind Deals on Wheels. Yes. Um, and I just loved, again, there's been so many shots this week. I've just, just enjoyed I love just for the Zoom campness room. of it. That was great, <laughs> yeah. it? And everything around was talking and everyone's talking to one another. You just saw this slow zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was great. <laughs> the train sound of the train in the background really amplified. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, not, yeah. that is, that's how you do the sorts of zoomy, zoomy effect stuff. That's how it's done. That, if you're going to do stuff like that, that's how it's done. Yes. Um, the thing about that is, Every, the thing is, we are now in an era where, in terms of television and social media and all that kind of thing, where you can pause and sort of screen grab stuff, all right? And I think that, the ability to do that, because we kind of knew that Janine was in the background of that picture, because everybody has sort of taken photos of, like, Janine's there, you can see Janine, I mean, that's how this story's yeah. going to... So it kind of feels like that sort of might have ruined that moment in terms of how... I, I feel like that was supposed to be a moment where we go, oh my god, Janine's in the picture! Oh! Oh, no, I disagree! I think the yeah, audience I were know. meant to know. I think the audience were in, in on it. And it was just basically, it was, it was a moment for us to basically say that it's there now, and at any moment... It's, it's going to go off, yeah, but and it's going to go off in the Vic. What does that actually prove, that picture? 
It's a strange one, isn't it? That's I my mean, thinking. It... Because presumably that, that, that bin, we're not in the Sean O'Connor era anymore. That bin will have been emptied, you know? So, mm -hmm. it, that's, so that bin's been emptied. <laughs> been All the Janine, oh. will have been, Janine will have said, oh, well, I, I was nowhere near the car crash. If Lynn decides to go, you were there, you were driving. Well, no, I wasn't. I was, I was on the square all night. Mm. I want to look at that picture there. Proves that I was nowhere near you because I'm in the background of Frankie's photo. So that kind of works in Janine's favour in some way. The only thing I can think of is that she, when she was on the phone to Mick, I think she was supposed to say that she was, uh, she was trying to say that she was already at Claire's. Um, That's true. So I don't know whether there's going to be a timestamp on the photo that sort of proves that Janine wasn't where she said she was at the time. But, and why was she putting something in that bin? But then she could just but, say, well, my yeah. bin's full. You know? There so definitely I mean, would I be don't... a digital timestamp on that photo. <clears throat> yeah. Frankie, so I but don't then Frankie's know... leaving. So it must be the hard mm. copy then. They must be going off of i guess yeah i don't i don't know i don't know it feels like there's maybe more to the picture because i just don't know what that in itself proves really mm. i don't know I, 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 i'm with you there i'm with you there but it's still exciting i love it's it very I love exciting it. I love it. it's a big old ticking time bomb it's a big old ticking time bomb and that's really exciting i love mm. a ticking time mm. bomb and I, so. I feel like we were always meant to know that's that's all right fair that's enough i just feel happen. like just the way because the, the zoom was so dramatic it kind of felt like oh were we were we not supposed to realize that Janine was in the back yeah, maybe. sorry maybe. sorry i kind of knew <laughs> sorry but there you oh, go. wow oh, anyway wow. yes yeah, so that's 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 that's, that's you know as we say that's the build-up that's the beginning september we're starting mm. now i think it's still on track do you agree with me that the mick leaving like christmas whatever way christmas yeah christmas, christmas time think, yeah, in a box or not in a box early prediction who <sighs> i hope not i hope not but oh no, i hope so time. oh do you want me to die now i want me to die why not because i hate not because i hate me as a character just, or danny dyer i don't want danny dyer to come after me i just think it would be really appropriate i don't know why i just think it would work really okay. nicely with janine and with linda janine i don't know I don't know. Well, I've not thought it through is, long enough. The only to... way that we would ever get a kind of happy ending for Mick and Linda is if because Mick and Mick and Linda are soulmates. So it's the only way that Linda stays on the square is if Mick, if she were to leave with Mick, you know, mm -hmm. and she can't do that if Mick dies, and that leaves us Linda, and they have that sort of start, you know, ripped apart lovers feeling to them, and then that's that. So uh, yeah, it feels like yeah. the only way for to really do this is for Mick to die, which feels really sad. Mm. Nice. If you find us on Twitter at Wolford Weekly, uh, our poll we'll put it up at the start of the show, and we're going to ask you: Ooh, Poll of the week. Do you think, poll of the week. Do you think Mick should, will be, not should, will be leaving in a box, or just leaving in a nice black cab somewhere off to Paris or something like Julius that, theme. Up with a Julius theme? What yeah, was the nice. results of last week's poll, please, Alexander? Well, we'll talk. Well, we'll talk about that. All right. At the end of the show, and I ain't want to gossip. Keep me but, hanging. But we'll, I, I always do, Rob. But we're going to stroll straight into the next story. So Jean came back from the caravan part sans Mo, which I was a bit disappointed about. We yes, were, to, we, I thought Mo was back for good, but clearly not. No, we'll yeah. see. We'll see her soon. She'll see her soon at the wedding. She'll be back. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Uh, and she was a bit panicked about returning, uh, but luckily had a, a bit of advice from Kavat, who uh, helped her paint her room. They had a paint fight, which is always standard lovely. whenever they're painting Love a fight. That. I know, I know. It was. So I loved true. the moment. I loved the moment with Arthur and it was so quietly done because dialogue yeah, was well happening done. around them as well. So clearly we weren't meant to really focus on that. But OK, obviously they had a shot specifically. It was to the show shot, it. yeah. But, but still, you can see <laughs> in the mean, background they were having mean. a conversation. Yes. And then with Arthur just painted jeans. And you can see the actress as well. She just she you could tell she was I don't know. She kind of came out of being Jean for a moment. And it was just I don't know. It was just a really lovely warm moment lovely. between them. It was really so nice. I did, and it, did, did love that. And moment. sort of cemented the moment, okay, they're fine now. But it but it yeah. wasn't it, it wasn't like it was a throwaway, oh don't think about that anymore moment. It, it felt perfectly right for the moment to happen there. Perfectly yeah. right. Perfectly done. Perfectly done. Hmm. So um so Jean has returned um and she got a bit panicked because uh she overheard Harvey. Not really saying anything nasty, but just kind of saying, like, I don't really want, I want to give Jean time to kind of breathe and I don't really want to do. She shouldn't be allowed in society. Yeah. She shouldn't be allowed in society. Yeah. How dare yeah. she? Get the pitchforks <laughs> out. Um, and, and Dana is also off to university, or has gone off to university this week, and is a bit concerned about Harvey's drinking again. Um, and so Dana has a few words with Jean as well at the park bench. Um, was, and I really just love that. Lovely, love wasn't that it? Well. Dana. It just, Dana, I know leaving is such a, mm. such a shame. And as is, you know, it, it, again, it's, it's similar to kind of echo what you said uh, earlier. It's just that I feel like they, they did give Dana a personality transplant about a month ago, which I thought was a huge shame because I loved her when she was first introduced and with Bobby. 
And if they kind of kept that, I kind of would have liked Diana to stay. Maybe, but I suppose... But then by the time that she left, I was sort of in completely in love with Diana again because she's literally mm. one so such a sweet person who was so perfect for Bobby. And I guess, you know, you can't have too many completely happy couples on the square. <laughs> can't have anyone happy drama. on the square. Can't have anyone happy there. <laughs> Christ, God forbid. Um, <laughs> but, you know, she had a nice exit, quite an understated exit, which felt right for her. Um, you know, she had that moment with her and Harvey at the tube station. What I did like was the fact that any university student I've ever known gets driven to university by their parents. Not in not in Albert Square. You get dumped at the rail. You get dumped at the tube station. Off you go with a massive rucksack carrying all your off to Scotland, bags, everything else. Sleeper, because I can't leave the square. I haven't been out, so I can't leave the square. So you you go off there. Off you go. Um, yeah, and also Harvey's a driver, so you think there's yeah, be like no, in his no, house, but no, no clearly not. No, no. I'm just got the tube. <laughs> Thanks. Take care. See you. Text me when you're there. Cheers. Um, it's, but so that's another kind of um, the exit done the only one we've got left is Lola who I think because there's so much to come for the rest of the year now Lola's exit 2023 it's going to be next year isn't it it's yeah, kind of literally like Clenus has walked in maybe kind of, well maybe it's kind of like Clenus <laughs> has walked in sort of held the door open and gone you 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 out James Barrett take your top <laughs> off Perry Fenwick get in here <laughs> Oh, isn't he just? God, we'll be talking a lot about Billy a bit later. So keep listening to that. But yeah, you're right. And it's been done in such a quite a short... I mean, when executive producers kind of come in, they yeah, do they have act characters. Mm. But it's normally done over a long period of time. Chris Clenshaw's just said, right, you know what, August, everyone Ouch. out. <laughs> that was done. Yes. Finished. So yeah, but to be fair, in a weird way, I kind of liked that approach because it means we're kind of attacking straight, into, straight, the straight era, into the Clenshaw era. Straight into the new era. You know? Yeah, no, I agree. And, like, um, and the, the only story he's kind of inherited is the Linda story now. Everything else seems hmm. to be all Chris's little babies. So, you know, that I, I love the storyline because Keeble was around before he sort of appeared on, on screen. So I don't know what direction. It's very difficult to sort of kind of mm. give credit to the right people when, when, when there's been a crossover of uh, execs, isn't there? Execs. Um, because, um, you know, the Keeble stuff had started when um, when John Sen was still on the screen. So I don't know how much of that is planned. Maybe he might have come in and said, Wait, what? Wasn't, Were you like two students? No, wasn't the keyboard? No, wasn't the keyboard stuff? Oh, I suppose it was done around it was. grey area. It was, it was it's it? like grey area. Like the grey area. Yeah, we'll call it the grey area. Grey area. Um, yeah. Yes, um, and it was. I think it was in Johnson's last few weeks that keyboard first appeared. So True. it's um, so. But, but then Clenshaw. Know, but then Clenshaw. Right, like, I'm going to extend it. Or, but then I, I think Clenshaw's mm. kind of like you just said then, he's extended it. I think what Clenshaw's Maybe. done I don't know. is he's gone, you know what, let's do flashback episodes. And everyone's gone, hooray, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and now genius. progress to, yes. Oh, and sort of extended it. So I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Who, yeah. who knows? We don't, we, but, sometimes we know what we're talking about. Sometimes we have no idea what we're talking about. And you know when no. we don't know what we're talking about because we're <laughs> floundering like this. Anyway, um, all right, all right. Um, so... What we're we talking about? The well, Dana. we're talking about Jean's oh, yes. return and Dana's exit. <laughs> That's what you call one in, one out. Um, you know, Dana's exit. Um, by the way, you know, Dana had a lovely exit, and she, I think, she did. Dana again. Dana will be back because she's only gone to university. You know, oh. so she'll be back. She'll be back. She will be back at some point. I, for, for what though? Was she coming because back for? So Nothing there. Well, you can say that about Harvey. squiggles, couldn't you? you can say that about squiggles. You know why? Yeah, but squiggles was a lot. She was there for a lot longer. She was part Dana. of the family unit with. <sighs> But, with you know with Chelsea yeah but Donna's got mom. Bobby she's got Harvey she you know, hasn't got, got Bobby though they're just friends she, now yeah but she can come back and see her mate you go you can see your mates now and again Alex don't you, you nah you know. once I've left I'm no, forget about yeah, it like, <laughs> just, nah, screw that yeah. nah. god yeah screw nah. him <laughs> why do you think I went up to Scotland I'm doing the same as Donna I'm literally doing what she's done I'm, the I'm up to Scotland doing what you and Ben you yeah, and Ben you really me and Ben the yeah, only people yeah. you ever communicate with just two people and people on the internet every now and then. You know what? There that's you know. all I have. That's all I have, Rob. That's all you need. But, um, that's all I need. But yeah, no, Jean's return was lovely because it also yes. showed that we, and Dana, Dana kind of leaving because it brought Harvey and Jean back together again. And we had that opportunity of seeing them, uh, you know, kind of, as, as Dana put it, Harvey needs caring for too. So that Jean and Harvey yes. both, and I think that's always been Jean's, Respo Jean's always felt responsible for other people and she needs someone to feel responsible for um, and she did that with Daniel as well didn't she and I just think that, that for her and Harvey to be together it just feels natural and it gives Harvey a place as well yes. because I think the Slaters like Harvey like yes. when, when Jean had that spell they invited Harvey and Harvey was trying his best to kind of keep Jean you know level um, it didn't quite work out. So it kind failing of, it, I thought, but yeah. failing very miserably. But the Slaters seem to have been introducing lots of people into their, they, they're kind of building up the Slaters by introducing people into them. They're like those, like a big 
blob that kind of like rolls around the square and it sucks people in a bit like um what's that film uh the blob the blob yeah maybe uh <laughs> but that anime film when that blob's going around that bathhouse and uh the blob san i don't know <laughs> Spirited away, spirited away. Oh, right, so it's okay. kind of sucking, you know, the Slaters are sucking things in. I don't know why it took me so... But anyway, yes, so I think I think it's lovely to see the Slaters build up. <laughs> this is what Rob has to deal with off every air week, as well as on week, screen. This <laughs> Poor Ben, poor Ben. Um, so, uh, yes, but, uh, and, and obviously Harvey, I think, is very clearly going to be integrated into sort of the Charlie Slater role as the months go on. Well, you know, him and Gene are going to get together again. Taxi driver. And taxi driver, you know, and he will sit in the, he will, he will sit in the Slater house <laughs> with his newspaper while all this mad Slater woman madness goes on around him. That's his exactly. future. And he will do it very well. You know, he's always sort of reminded me of Charlie. And now he has, he's, he's, he couldn't be more like Charlie, you know. So all it needs now is for Mo to return and sort of give him hell every other week. And it will just be like, Charlie's been reborn. Lovely. So I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Sheen and Harvey for the win, I say. So this story kind of moves on then, where uh, Kirat then uh, talks to Stacy and Jean this week about his concerns about Ravi getting his feet under the table quite quickly Very in yeah. Suki's life. Um, and he kind of opened up to Stacy this week and said that, you know, Ravi has always taken things away, almost like a child. If he sees something he wants that's shiny, then he wants to take it away. So he's taken jobs away. He's taken family away from him. And he's taken relationships away from him. And so Stacey's kind of being very wary now of Ravi. Um, and Ravi's already trying it with Stacey as well. Um, uh, but some some advice is by Jean to Kirat is that, you know, you need to keep an eye on her. You need to look out for her because the only way you can, you know, make sure that he's not manipulating her is by watching from the inside not from the outside looking in, uh, which I thought was very good advice from Jean. Yes, again, Mother Jean, Mummy Jean. Mother Jean. Find a nest and Woman of the earth, on an egg. Jean. Mm. She, she's an earth mother. Uh, so, yeah, so really, again, it's kind of building up the Panasars. It's kind of building up the story further with, with Suki. Suki's still using Ravi as a kind of like uh, a crutch for her to kind of move on. Yep. You concerned for Suki? Are you worried? Very concern, you... Yeah, very concerned for Suki because obviously she's been very, very easily manipulated there. Now let's not pretend that both of us wouldn't have Ravi moved into our house in a heartbeat, you know. Oh, <laughs> but God, yeah. oh, Flipping heck. very, very, very <laughs> simple. Please, I don't barely know you. Would you like my room? Yeah, please, please. But I'll go on the sofa. I don't, you live here now. It's your house. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yes, it's th there's something very dark about Ravi, isn't there? Because he is mm. he's very he's very much moved on from the fact that he's killed his dad in inverted commas um couldn't care less about that and the fact that you know we're still i'm still kind of quite unclear exactly how ravi was put into that suitcase you believe that he was cut into pieces that requires a certain mind you know <laughs> so if he had to do that sexy he's over mind. that a sexy <laughs> sexy dark mind um so, <laughs> uh, so you know ravi's absolutely fine just kind of ticking along through life and is enjoying the game i think of um, yes of he is up here, right? he's very he's having a great time and he's already decided that Stacey is on is on his list. There was a great moment with Stacey this week, which for me was line of the week, um, where she said, you see that mark? You've just stepped over it. Great line. Because I thought she was going to say, you see that mark? That's where I plummed someone to death. So you what? Yeah. Great yeah. minds, Rob. Great minds. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's what I thought she was going to say, but the actual line was even better. I like, I yeah. like that line a lot. Um so do you think for a start that Stacey is going to be able to resist Ravi's charms for long because she's only... No. <laughs> no and also, let's be honest, this is Stacey and she's very yeah, easily... Bless her. She's weak with men, isn't she? But she's she is. a strong old woman until you give, you give her a six pack and then she's weak, weak at the news. Or Martin. We're weak with men and insanely fertile. So yes. let's, 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 let's At least seven honest. more children coming for Stacey in the next <laughs> six years. Stacey needs to have more children at some point, and I feel like Ravi might be the next. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, taking nothing away from Stacey, you know, it, I did love that she, it was already starting, wasn't it, this week when she kind of said, Oh, thanks for my drink, and then gave Kirat a hug yeah. and then looked at Ravi, and yeah, it was like, yeah. Oh, really? Stacey. You know where this is heading. Stacey. Straight away. I know. Honestly. And Ravi was kind of just there tipping his cat like that, going, mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, yeah. I'll give it a Nice week. try, <laughs> love. I like your game there. You do your thing at the moment, sure. Go for it. <laughs> I mean, okay. I love Ravi. I've, 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 of course, the obvious. Bad, bad, we should bad all love Ravi. Ravi. Bad Ravi. Bad Ravi. He's just he's just intertwined and the, you know into the Panasar so well. Um, with, there's this. We know there's a secret. I mean, it's not been revealed. There's a secret, but we know there must be a Taking secret time there. Bomb. 
and we know that another member of the family are being introduced to the Panasars. Um, last. And uh, we'll talk about it in much more detail at the end of yes. the show. I ain't want to gossip. But I don't think it's a secret to say that Daddy Panasar is on his way. He's and, on his way. And yes. um, can we just also say there's something in the water, uh, in the blood of the Panasars? Because Daddy Panasar, <laughs> I mean, Daddy. Emphasis come on, on Daddy. <laughs> What is with them? Shallow podcast, very shallow we, podcast. I, we are, shallow. we are. I'm sorry to say, we really are, shallow. we really are. But if, you know, if the extenders want to invite us to the set just to meet the Panasars, then who am I to quibble? Fine with that, fine with I that. I mean, no problem. <laughs> But yes, um, exciting. I mean, yeah, all this week for the Panasars really was sort of just the establishment of Ravi sort of just basically pulling the strings everywhere. Um, Suki sort of just becoming a yes woman to him because Suki, I think, has become incredibly sort of fragile about this. She's basically said anything that Ravi says goes at the moment because Suki is just sort of like, I, I just need some stability. He is providing that. That's fine. Um, it's, I think we're going to have a bit, as, as time goes on, I think some of the old Suki will return. Because mm. obviously she's still got Eve to deal with in the background. There was a little moment between them this week, nothing too yes. major. Um, but just, you know, the, so that is still kind of ticking along in the background. Now, how is Eve going to fit into it when Daddy Panasar returns? I, I do not know, but I look forward to it immensely. Because I'm looking forward to Eve having a big old story. Because Eve, Eve is fantastic. I love Eve so much. Like the way she is slotted into the Slaters. I love her with the kids. I love her kind of, she's one of these that kind of like doesn't mind going around to different character groups and kind of dispensing advice. You know, she's mm -hmm. given, I like her relationship with Billy. That's a random friendship that's come out of nowhere, but I really like it. You know, they get on really, really well. Just Eve is great. Yes. Keep Eve around for years and years. Love her. Love her. Mm. Um, brilliant and actress, stick brilliant Suki. character. Stick I mean, Suki putting them together. An interesting move. So we'll see. We'll see where it goes now. Again, happiness on the square. I think not young Alexander. No. So, <laughs> we'll I mean, see. do you feel like that they've kind of put, they flung Eve and Suki together as almost a, a necessity because of what happened with her and Honey, Suki and Honey? Do you, Maybe, do you, would you, would you just... prefer it if they kind of just had forgotten that happened and that the story wasn't happening? I wouldn't. I love Sukini. No, I mean, honestly. this is the thing. When the Suki and Honey thing was sort of going on, I was there was an element to me that kind of thought, oh, does Suki need this element to her character? I wasn't sure. And however, now you know, mm -hmm. Suki, and, Suki and Eve work together so well on screen, and now mm -hmm. they've started. They've really taken their time. They're building up on it. Yeah, they've mm. taken the time with Suki's sexuality to kind of establish why she is the way she is in terms of that side of her personality. There is much more to come with Suki, obviously. We're going to learn a lot more about Suki, I think, as Daddy Panasar arrives. It is looking very likely that, da that Daddy Panasar is exactly how Suki described him to us, which I thought was interesting because when Suki first was talking about him and she was telling me that he was controlling and all that kind of thing, I was sort of like, oh, pot kettle black Suki, love, you know. Um, <laughs> whereas, actually, you can, and maybe Suki was lying about it because it felt like everything to do with Daddy Panasar was sort of you know under under a hidden veil and cloaked and dagger and all that kind of thing. Was Suki, how many lies was Suki telling? And yet it seems that there's a lot of truth to what Suki's been saying. So I don't know, but I'm very excited mm. to find out about it. Bring it on! Yes, me too. Right, so we're going to move on then to the final part of this <clears throat> long story. And I feel like conspiracy theories are on their way. For me, it's potentially very exciting. So, uh. It is very exciting. Very potential about it, Alex. <laughs> I mean, before we started recording, Rob and I have kind of gone off tangent a little bit already about this. <laughs> we have a half so, hour discussion about what we're going to discuss. <laughs> we're about to discuss. So it may <laughs> leak into now, might yes. leak into now. But the long story short is, is that Phil talked to his old mate Dodge. He's gone through his list. I love the, the LGBT ally, by the way. The old, you dodge the LGBT, your, your husband's husband. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yes, it's nice. I know. We love Dodge. We love the underworld love in London. Yeah, the London underworld, dodge. waving their flags. They love it. Little, white, little uh, underground <laughs> rainbow flags underneath it. Love <laughs> it. Right. You do. Spot them a mile off. Um, and uh, he, Dodge mm. tells him that the, while he's trying to find a bit of dirt about Keeble, because that's always been mm. his plan, apparently. It wasn't to, yeah. to shop anyone. It's to find dirt on Keeble. Yeah. Dodge says, it's always been personal with Keeble. Cryptic. Ooh, what could that mean? Mm. What could it mean? So Phil goes and meets up with Keeble in, in her car. She says, oh, you got me here, Phil. Okay, this is what I've really got you here to do after two months. Gave him a brown envelope. Photo in the envelope. We see shoes. We see shoes. We see shoes. Else. We see trousers. We see a certain pose. A pose that now, perhaps many people have. Now this, we paused it. Now this is what I mean. <laughs> this is what when I said when I said earlier about the sort of the screen grabbing generation and that, and that the fact we can do that Hello. now. That's, that's us. Hi, by the way, sorry about it. You know, if they were if the if the show was hoping that we didn't know who that was by the time we the flashback, episode, we're sorry. Okay, but that's what happens, isn't it? And that is very obviously Billy that's on that picture. 
Billy Mitchell. We are in the era of Billy Mitchell. <laughs> the era of Billy Mitchell. Oh, this is great. Great. That's exciting, though. <laughs> Brand new kind of facets to this character that's been around for years. Now, <clears throat> let's just kind of throw some theories out here, okay? Because obviously mm. the flashback episode is on Monday. I'm so excited. Double Simon Ashdown next week, by the way, people. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Love it. Um, and... So obviously, so we, we've, it's established now that Keeble is doing this on a personal vendetta, and he wants she wants Phil to give her any information about Billy. Uh, let's let's just assume that we're gonna, for the, for the benefit of doubt, we're gonna say that it's Billy. Okay, yes. we might we might be massively surprised that it's not Billy, but we think it's definitely Billy. Okay, now what could Keeble want to know about Billy? For goodness' sake, like what could Billy possibly have done? That could have happened in the 1970s. Now, my theory is, if this is personal, from any trailers that we've seen in the flashback, it's been limited, as it should be, because there should be a lot of surprises in this flashback episode, which I cannot wait for. Um, there seems to be some sort of job on uh, going on, because obviously they're the Mitchells, so there must be some sort of shenanigans going on. Bless them. 70s shenanigans, Alex. 70s shenanigans, shenanigans is allowed, because we didn't know there were so many up until that point. So, yeah, we're, we're <laughs> pretending... Um, in my I mind, wonder, this is what brand the new, fresh what did, sh- what did Shenanigan <laughs> Warehouse look like in the 70s? We, should, we may find out. <laughs> um, it's the same, just with a few posters of, like, you know, the basic yeah, the boxes, on there. Less yeah. boxes in the background of that, other background of that. Uh, yeah, more flares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, slightly <laughs> grainy footage and everyone was allowed to smoke. You know, that's sort of thing. Um, and drink more liberally and drive the <laughs> Yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. No mm. seatbelts. Um, uh-uh. And so... <laughs> My 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 theory, and it's not a spoiler, I'm just guessing here, but my theory is that something has happened on that job that's involved a member of Keeble's family that either Billy was responsible for or she believes Billy was responsible for. And that's why she's now after Billy, is my right. thinking. Because okay. Phil didn't look... Because Phil, when, she, when he saw the photo, didn't say, why do you want to know about him for? But he was instantly sort of like, no, it's not going to happen. So but Phil knows something, I think, doesn't he? Yes. He looked amazingly shocked to see Billy staring back at him or whoever was in the photo. Bit. It was almost like it was <laughs> inevitable. It was like it wasn't it wasn't yeah. It was when. It was when was this information mm. yeah, gonna yeah, finally yeah, yeah, yeah. leak into Keeble's little brain. And does Billy know um, anything? And does Billy but see this is the thing. It's like Billy Why? seems completely mm. oblivious to any kind of but, like uh, that, that's Billy full think... stop though, isn't it? Well, that's what I mean. So did he walk Bless into him. something accidentally? Like I did he think, always yeah. not know that he's him he's got some kind of link to keyboard? It one doesn't way or seem beyond the realms of possibility that Phil might have held something from Billy all these years, because that's the Mitchell way, isn't it? Mm. You know, there's always mm. a secret waiting to be exposed and you sort of accept mm. the Mitchells, of course they have a secret. So I would ima- I could imagine that Phil has kept something from Billy all these years. <gasps> but it seems less likely that Billy, because let's be honest, there has been lots of, if Billy has killed somebody, there have been many, 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 many opportunities in the past and Billy to sort of confess that to somebody, especially when he they... was with Janine or something or something like that, you know? Oh, so yeah. I don't think Billy has done something. Um, He's not killed someone, surely. No, I can't imagine I them writing so. that Billy's killed someone. Or not realising that he has or something like that. Mm. I don't think Billy has knowingly murdered anybody. I don't. Think. I mean, it's, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone to say that you know when Billy was first introduced as a character a with Jay, he was a villain. He was a bad yeah. egg. Beating Jamie up, yeah, and he beat Jamie up, and he he was quite threatening around the square as well. Yeah, he, was, he, he was. If you look at early early Billy, like completely different character. Like he was a nasty very, piece of work. Yeah, yeah. he right. manipulated Steve Owen with drugs, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and all all kinds of bits and pieces. There was a time um, where people were scared of Billy Mitchell. Can you imagine there that? was. A time. <laughs> that did happen. That did happen. <laughs> And it was a it was a glorious time because that was when Billy was 3D. He had a character attached to him, wow. and then slowly it's kind of dwindled. And then for the last three weeks, and so this is another thing that's really I'm frustrating with myself, Rob. I'm disappointed with myself. Good. Why Good. did I not see it? Why, Why did, did I not see that you Billy didn't was? See. The Billy potential on the horizon, did you? No, you didn't. Not so much the potential that they thought, were doing stuff with Billy. Because you he's just been thought we were just going to so get many... a regurgitated version of any sort of Billy story we've ever had in the past. Oh, honey, oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Oh, no, honey, Billy. Billy. No, yeah. Alexander, no. New Billy, fresh Billy. <sighs> Yes. And he's getting his suit, and he's getting his suit for the wedding. So clearly, mm-hmm. something's going to happen with the weddings. This is all going to maybe come out. So that was a nice little link. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's just mad. It's just mad. It's Billy. What is going ha- <laughs> to be revealed? What is going to be revealed? A Billy Keeble? Is it going to be Billy? That's another thing. Is he the long lost ex husband or son? Or I don't know. Where the hell? How would so Keeble... much? Oh gosh, I don't know. Oh, is is Keeble Billy's daughter? I don't know. How could could that work? I don't know. What's, don't what's know. happening? <laughs> what's I don't know. What's it's the 70s. 70s was a long time ago, Alex. You know, you were, you were like in your 30s then. So I don't know it what. Was. <laughs> it was. 
<laughs> I was, I was, uh, I had, I had ambition in the seventies, uh, and now I'm just an old fart, just moaning now about your senders you. everywhere. Now look at you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I still can't get my head around the fact that Chris Clenshaw, on the first day, sat down in his chair and wrote, "Right, Billy, what are we going to do with him?" Amazing. I, just can't get I love that. No, but I love that though because he's he's walked in and basically said, "Right, there's a character here that has been kind of not sorely used properly, underused for years yeah. and years and years, and I'm going to sort that out." If he now has the same thoughts about Jay, then this is golden era EastEnders on our way soon. Because I mean, it has just... to, doesn't it? Because it links with Lola as because well. Because Billy and Jay are a, are a unit anyway. So mm. if you have a Billy storyline, once they've sorted out this Honey and Jay rubbish, I'm sorry, but that's the word I'm going to use now. Because in comparison yeah, to what we're rubbish. getting now, it's rubbish. Okay. Um, so Jay and, Jay and Billy are going to be sort of be a close unit again in the coming months, you would hope, with everything that's coming. Um, so that's going to be more Jay material. Just, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. But I'm so, because it seemed at first, when we were announcing this this Mitchell flashback, this was all going to be about Phil. We were going to discover more stuff about Phil. It's going to alter Phil's character. Yeah. And that seems now that this is more going to be about Billy, which is crazy. <laughs> because if you think, and it's so obvious now you think about it, because, you know, they've announced the fact that we're, that, you know, we're going to see Billy's father and all that kind of thing. Why? Why at no point did we kind of think, well, why on earth are they introducing Billy's family into the into the equation? Yeah. The, the, the... But he knows so little about really. Yeah, exactly. Know. You know, his brother died. He looked, looked yeah. after Jay, came to the square, and that's pretty much been the history of Billy Mitchell. So yeah. you're right. Why have we been so Why didn't we see it sad, Alex? so slow to see it? Yeah, it's, it's obvious, really, when you look at it. And in a weird way, I still want to. I, I wait to see what they do with Billy. But to be fair, I've got I've got a hundred percent trust in Chris Clenshaw. I, I really do. In <laughs> what they're going to do with Billy. And I must say, the thing I hated about Billy was, as you said, they just keep recycling the same yeah, story with that him. Was your, that was your main honey. issue, wasn't it? it was just that was my gripe. Constant regurgitation. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And similar to perhaps another couple. And the thing is, is that <laughs> the merry-go-round, some might say. Uh, and the thing is, is that... Oh, no, to we're going to get hate again, aren't we? He said it, not me. I didn't say that. Go for it. Um, Alex at and... authorweekly.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's nice that you're right. We're learning we're learning about Billy's history. And actually, How it's mad. not a retcon. We, no. It's not a retcon at all because we're learning we something we really don't know. Because <laughs> we, we don't know it. it. Exactly. No. It is exciting. It's just, I still just can't get my brain around wait. it. Billy Mitchell. So, I don't think I have been this excited for an episode of EastEnders since, I know, like, I, know. I mean, maybe even the Lucy Beale reveal. I'm so excited for Monday. It's insane. I can't even tell you. Um, I mean, the length of this Keeble stint, by the way, she hasn't actually even been in that many episodes since this all started, to be fair. Mm -mm. And is she going to be kind of seen much more after next week? Because presumably this is starting something up new. So we're going to, whatever we discover in the episode is apparently connected to Keeble in some way because we know it's personal. So is, we got a lot more of Keeble to come after this? Because I love Keeble. I think she's a great character. She's I'm like wondering, Keeble. I'm wondering, Ooh. because they keep talking about Keeble's retirement. Is that yes. not just an opportunity to make Keeble a to character? Is it a square? <laughs> yes, Don't you think? I I'd, I'd be up for that. I'd be up for that. <laughs> Can you imagine? I know I'd love it because in Bad Girls, I love that actress so much. And she's just amazing. And I love her. And I just want her in everything. Alison and everything. Newman is amazing. Yeah. I love her in everything she does. Thank you, and the fact that she, Thank you. And the fact that she is kind of back now. Because uh, oh, the excitement I felt. Do you remember that first episode where she like walked into the interview room with Phil and Richie? Now, completely unannounced. That's the kind of surprise that we like. Just strolled in all <laughs> smug. We had no clue that this was all to come. Um, so, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what the hell your theories are about what is to come on Monday. It, we're pretty sure it is Billy related, all right? You will have seen pictures floating around. It's not just us. Everybody does it now. That's the era that we live in in terms of TV. You can pause stuff. You can screen grab stuff. So we're sorry to anyone, any crew that might be watching thinking, oh, no, everyone knows. We're sorry, okay? <laughs> That's just what happens now, all right? But it hasn't taken away from the excitement of it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. In fact, I it's built up wait. for me. Built it it's up. made it like, more. What the, what the hell is going on? Mm. Anyway, so uh, so we, we've got an email from you, uh, you guys, you listeners, you watchers. Uh, and also we've got a couple of big news stories, which I'm sure Ooh. you know, but we're going to have a little bit of a chat about them now on I Ain't One to Gossip. And you know me, I ain't one to gossip. 
So this is the part of the show where we read out your comments that you sent to us on our email or on our Twitter or on our Facebook group. All the details are scrolling at the bottom of the screen. But we also do a poll every week and we are going to reveal the results right now. Last week, we uh, asked you which popular extra character would you like to see given a main story? Uh, and we gave the options of Shrimpy, Tracy, Winston and Marie. Um, I said... I forget who I said now. Who did I say? Oh, I said Marie. Well, first of all, you said, first of all, you said Winston, and then you yes, realised I don't mean Winston at all. I mean Marie. Yes, so, Marie yeah, because <laughs> they're practically the same person. Um, so yeah, you said uh, Marie. I kind of was like, I was happy for any of them, but ideally Tracy or Shrimp. Uh -huh. I said. So who did it then? Who won? Well, you were you were the majority then because Tracy won with sixty five percent of the vote, followed wow. by Shrimpy with twenty four. Marie came well, third with six percent, and Winston last with five percent. Oh, oh poor Winston. Sad. Six and five. Um, if it's much of a muchness, right? It's out of the Brexit vote, is it? That's all right. <laughs> exactly. Nice little split. Nice even yeah. split. Uh, and we got a few comments as well. First of all, from Ooh. Bridge Street Troll, who said, OMG, the extras recreating Scooby-Doo. I would love it. If only Wellard was still alive to play Scooby-Doo. Where Scooby. have you gone? <laughs> <laughs> I think the idea was that they would like, they'd get in a mystery machine together. And oh, okay. And just have their own little yeah. spin-off. That's not yeah, a why not? idea. Why not? Why Someone else who likes uh, the idea of all four uh, is uh, Tom Spillman, who said, with four choices and four episodes a week, I say a, d I say a day in the life of an episode for each one over the course of the week. Well, that's that the 40th fun. anniversary sorted, I think. That's Imagine it, that. That's if it. they do that in the, the run-up to the 40th, just have a, a day in the life of Tracy or the day in the life of Shrimpy or Winston or Marie. Have they... Have they revealed yet what they're doing for the 100th episode? Not 100th episode, the 100th anniversary I, of the BBC. I have a feeling that they're not doing anything. You know, well, they have to do the, something. Well, it's, I think the, the BBC are just doing a week of stuff. Um, well, they're doing and, something on Strictly, aren't they? They're, yeah, they're, they're doing, on Strictly Come Dancing. They're dancing to popular theme tunes. theme tunes. Yeah, mm. so if EastEnders doesn't show up at some point there, that would be ridiculous. That would be a crime. That would be a crime. Like, remember the group and Doctor Who? Big old raves of the East Enders theme tune. Doosh, 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 doosh. Doctor Who as well, Rob. I would have yeah. thought you'd want to see Doctor Who yeah, yeah. dance too. That's an amazing <laughs> tune as well, especially when big orchestra and... <laughs> Brilliant. But yes, but they must do something for the 100th. They must do something for the 100th anniversary of the BBC. It's their, well, it's their token soap. It's hardly the jewel in their crown yet. yet. I'm sure we'll get back up there soon. But it's like I believe in cleaners. <laughs> <Right. laughs> no, believing more in cleaners. Comment below. What do you want to see the EastEnders do as a story for the hundredth anniversary? Or have they already started it? Is Billy the hundredth anniversary? God, is Billy the hundredth. You know what it's going to be, isn't it? It's going to be. It's going to be one episode where one of the characters, one of, you know, it's going to be Sonia and Vi sat there chatting in the chatting in the cafe, going, "I love the BBC. It's great. <laughs> the BBC license fee is totally worth it. I always it. pay my be, license fee. And that'll be yep." And that'll and though Vile kick off and say the BBC Life of Fear isn't worth it. And then Sonia will turn around and go, it totally is because they show excellent programming on a week-to-week -week basis. And that'll be the scene. That'll be it. Propaganda, as some might Shut say up. on Twitter. Shut <laughs> I don't believe in that. Don't you, don't you dare think that. <laughs> right. So first news story that we uh linked. So new stories last weekend. There was one on Saturday and one on Sunday. And both, if you follow Exciting. us on Twitter and our YouTube channel, were also revealed by ourselves. So we were able to get privy of that news as well. Let's call us and, news um, at 10. Because that's when it came out. And it was very exciting. So on Saturday, yes. the first news that was leaked, and we uh, revealed it on our YouTube channel, was that Dot is having a proper send-off. Could that be the 100th anniversary of the show? It would be appropriate, I think, actually. I think that would be a really... When is it? Is it November or October? Oh, don't ask me things like this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be the perfect send off. I, th I think that would be the perfect sort of thing because the thing is, because it's such he's just such an old character in terms of how many years she was on the square and you know old as well. Um, you know, there's much history there. To be <laughs> not quite hundred though. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> not quite. There, but not quite. Nearly there, but not quite. Um, it, but there's so much, so many different characters that could be pulled back for her funeral. And now, I mean, the first question is, you know, if they're going to do a big old dot send off, who's who are we bringing back, back then, Alex? Who are we bringing back? back? Who are we bringing back, <gasps> Alex? Oh, so many. Past. I mean, they have to bring back Michael Cashman, don't they? She went Colin, to yeah. You'd Colin, think. they have you'd to bring think. him back. They have to. And I refuse Caesar. to believe. I refuse to believe that Ian would miss this. So Adam Woodjack, mm. whatever your issues is, sort it out. Get out of it. Just for a week, they need, please. 
they yeah they need to get him on a on a week contract and then you're quite right they cannot they Ian cannot would not, miss not have him on the show Ian that would, would not miss that at all he that would no be chance. bad I am not having Ian just send a card oh Ian sends a card by the way he can't make the funeral but he sends a card shut up no I'm not having that <laughs> no. or that he was at the funeral uh, or he was at the party he's at the after you know oh, we have wait, to see him yeah what a lovely service wasn't that lovely wasn't that <laughs> Would have loved nice that. of Ian to turn up, wasn't it? Had to go back, though. <laughs> couldn't come back, though. Couldn't come back. Such back a shame. Nice, to, nice <laughs> to see that he's back with Jane, but we didn't, so she couldn't come back either. Nice to see that. Oh, yeah. oh, with no. Pia. I mean, there's so there's so much potential. I mean, I mean obviously, should they need to bring back Lofty. They need to bring back Mary. They have excuse, to bring back them. Any excuse. Will but actually, Michelle. They, are, they were a good friends. She, you know she won't. This she, is the question. She should, but she would Clenshaw? Clenshaw? <laughs> And I'm sure, in Glenshaw, they seem to have the power of bringing people into their power. It would be nice. Back into. It would be nice. One week. Let's not, I don't think. Come on. I don't. I think out of all the characters, make her don't direct get the episode yourself, as well. Give her everything. Give oh, her what yeah, she wants. No, yeah, give her what she wants. Yeah. Well, you never know. <laughs> you never know. But I wouldn't get overly excited about that notion. But apart from that, I think the the, the sky's the limit. Because Dot was, was connected to so many different characters over the years. So many. Most of them are dead now, to be fair. But there was a huge amount. There's a plethora of characters that she, that she could um, have come for her funeral. So I'm very excited. Um, do you, the thing you I, think also, go on. Well, I was going to say, on. do you think this also spells the end of Dotty? Because it kind of makes her almost not necessary. Well, not to sound too cruel. Heaven forbid you sound cruel about characters. <laughs> um, I no, I like Dottie, though. That's the thing. Well, I love Dottie. I really like Dottie. But the thing is, I'm also thinking, uh, what I think is going to happen for a start is that that little twist at Christmas, I think, is going to be reversed. I think. I think I can see that happening. I think so, too. I Nick has to be her father. father. We haven't seen it. We haven't. It's not like they've... They, they haven't done a <laughs> <laughs> they haven't done a single thing about that since that reveal at all. Mm-hmm. So that kind of suggests to me that they're kind of thinking, let's hope that that was forgotten about. We're never going to mention that again. Sandy might show up at the funeral and go, oh, sorry, I was drunk. I don't know what I was talking about. Yeah. And then and then that will be that. And then that sort of connection will, will remain, maybe. Perhaps, perhaps. You were going to say something as well about Dot's that, funeral. That. Oh, great, great, minds, great, minds. great minds. Great minds. All the awards. Great shallow minds. <laughs> So yes, very exciting. As, yes. as as we always say, comment below or get in touch with us. What who do you think might return for Dot's funeral? Who would you like to see return for Dot's funeral? However, there was also more news on Sunday. Bong oh. at ten o'clock. There was more, and we revealed this on our Twitter at Warford Weekly. Um, and that is, and we've already said it at the top of the show, Daddy Panasar, mate, mate, Daddy Panasar, mate, <laughs> Daddy Panasar kid, Daddy Panasar kid, ah. <laughs> yep, yep, Nish Panasar is on his way, played by Navin Chowdhury again. A, who, who is an actor, by the way, like a bit in stuff. Not, he's, not he's, a he's comedian. A prop, no, not a pop star. <laughs> Not the son of someone who was famous. <laughs> Shut your face up. Shut your chiseled mouth up. They've actually please. hired an actor on the show. <sighs> Nonsense. Nonsense. I mean, he is an actor of some note, Alexander. That's yes, I, I know. Meant. I know what you meant. Ooh, and and and, and oh my goodness! Well, lucky when... I cannot reach through the screen and flick your little face. <laughs> yes. Um. Oh my goodness! I mean, How I'm so excited with this news. So up. excited. At last. What? How long has this taken? I know. I He's been alluded to. Years. Christ alive, it's been a while. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, Panasar. I've already, I've said already that I feel like there's Archie vibes seeping in. Yes, him. it seems that way, doesn't it? He's been described as uh, someone who is controlling, someone who is yearning power. So something that you'd expect from that sort of character. Suki is clearly quite terrified. <laughs> and something that produces Suki as a wife, who turns Suki into the woman that she is today. I cannot wait. Because there is a lot that the Panasar kids don't know about Daddy Panasar. We yes. st- we, he's he's going to have to start being called Nish soon, let's be fair. Um, no, but... always Daddy Panasar. He's got the nickname. I'm sorry it's happened. It's, uh, Once you get a happened. nickname on this show, Roland, sorry. it sorry. happens. Yeah. <laughs> Your Daddy Panasar um, from now on, Nish. But I'm very excited because this is, uh, this is, I mean, this dispels huge stuff for the Panasars, a family that desperately, desperately, desperately needed this massive story. Um, yes. Mixed in with everything else that's already going on yes. at the moment with Ramvia's death and Ravi and who I think is his son. You know, that's, that seems like a... But this is it. How's Ravi going to react when Daddy Panasar arrives Daddy on Panasar. the square? Daddy with a capital letter. I do not know. 
I can't wait. There is so much stuff coming, Alex. And this is desperate. This is definitely why Lola's exit isn't going to be till next year because there is so much stuff going on. They've mm-hmm. already got pretty much stuff that we can say, well, that can be Christmas, that can be Christmas, that can be Christmas, all lined up without Lola even sh- showing up at any point. So, mm. I don't know. But you forget there's also the other Unless Lola suddenly weeks. starts saying, ow, I have a headache in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm like, all right, okay. But, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I, but I wouldn't want them to do that. You know, no, you know no, she be it issue based or whatever. And she deserves well, to be fair, seeing how well that the exits have gone for the characters that that Clenshaw clearly couldn't give two tosses about, <laughs> you know, we, you know, the likes of Dana and Jada, that you know they were decent actors. And Stuart had a great exit, Rainey had a great mm-hmm. exit. So I have no doubt that this will be dealt with very well, actually, because I mm. believe in Clenshaw. Clearly, so. clearly. I mean, so so huge news. Well, we should also drop in, actually, and something I had forgotten to add to my show notes today, um, that they've also given uh, a Ricky a bit of a, a, a padding, so kind of saying, like, this is what Ricky's going to be when he comes onto the soap. Oh, yes. And it did feel like there was a bit of a character change for Ricky, a little tiny bit of eating wincy what? bit. Well, they kind of gave out that he was a bit like... Um, oh, name's escaping me right now. Uh... His son, who came back, who was Liam. Uh, Liam, thank you. How you could know, you? How could you? <laughs> well, exactly. I, no, I chose to. Uh, then they brought Liam back. They, there was a bit of a bring character. Liam back, <laughs> and, they, and it felt like that this was kind of not one hundred percent. I'm not saying this is, this is just they're destroying Ricky at all. It's just like when when they first announced Ricky, I thought he was going to come back and be kind of like the softer side of Janine. And it sounds like that he's going to be a bit more of a supportive side of Janine, kind of like That's what a- she's. Um, yeah, but you, see now, I don't think that's a, I, see now. I don't think that's a, that's anything character because Ricky has always been, even when Janine has done wrong, he's done he's done you know sort of like I'm done with you, Janine, I'm done. But actually, Ricky has always been there as a sort of pole of support for Janine over the years. Um, mm. I'm but do you think she very much? Bear in mind what she's been doing. I, well, I think quite, he won't agree, but he will be there for her. Bear in mm. mind, I've been watching 2008 episodes at the moment, which has got Janine and Ricky on screen at the moment, and Janine's busy doing Janine type stuff. Nothing too tragic at the moment, but she's there being yeah. Janine. And Ricky has turned around to her and said, "I've been there for you, and I will always be there for you." However, you're being a bitch, and that's been basically Ricky's role in Janine's life. So I think I, it's okay. more of that would make perfect sense for Ricky. And Janine needs that kind of person to keep her human and keep her fam and keep her level. Yeah, so which that's I agree. what Ricky's role will be. I agree. I agree. I completely agree with that with Ricky. It's just I worry that perhaps she will be, he will be a bit like I don't know. I feel like he's going to be kind of more of a supporting role with Janine hijinks a bit, like what well, Liam was. Oh, and I don't no, want that. I don't I think want, it, I don't no. think it'll be that at all. I think if anything, okay. Ricky, because the thing is with Liam, he sort he <laughs> I, he sort of he sort of well, Liam was a new character completely. Let's be fair. Mm. Uh, whereas um, Ricky will come in and Ricky will come in and he will sort of be trying to do the best thing. And if he sees doing the best thing, like for an easy life for his sister, whilst trying to say this is a really bad idea, Jenny, this is a really bad idea, that what I think will sort of be Ricky's role in it, and. Yeah, I, but I'm looking forward to Ricky coming back because Ricky's a great Oh, me too. And Absolutely. he will be needed, I think, in the coming weeks to sort of level Janine um, and get her ready for her next story at once Mick leaves. So bring him on. Bring him on. Good, good, good. Right. So one email as well that we received. Don't forget to get in touch with both Rob and I. Rob Wolford Weekly at gmail.com or myself, Alex Wolford Weekly at gmail.com. Or you can send it to both of us. We don't mind. We're not picky. Uh, and that's exactly what Victoria did or Vicky. And she wrote, hi, Alex and Rob. Hope you're both yeah. well. First off, I'm a long time EastEnders viewer, but only recently you discovered your podcast, and now I never miss an episode. Mwah! Why would you miss one of our episodes? Hey, what? I have a question for the podcast this week. Do we think Daddy Panasar's arrival spells trouble ahead for Stacey and Kirat? Uh, I am a big supporter of Stacey and Kirat together, and they've seemed really loved up lately, but all we know that's a sign of trouble ahead. Remember that Stacey knows about Daddy Panasar's upcoming release from prison and didn't tell Karat after Eve Ooh, asked her to hold that's off. We forgot true. about that, didn't we? Yes. We haven't heard any honest, more. Well <laughs> <laughs> we haven't heard any more about the issue since. Do we think it's just a small plot hole that the writers have forgotten, or if, or if this will be what causes trouble for them? Karat strikes me as the type of character who would see this as a betrayal, especially as he has really opened up to Stacey and the wider Slater family. I agree. Loving the podcast and all the best, Vicky. Thank you, Ooh. Vicky. I yes. agree, actually. Uh, yes, I had forgotten about that. Uh, and that's an excellent point. I think here I will see that as a massive betrayal. But and also bear in mind, because um, it's not like Stacey has gone to Suki and said, oh, I know this about you, by the way. So that hasn't that hasn't happened. So 
but I think that Kira will see that. Like Stacey, you should have told me that. That's us over. And maybe if you're kind of championing Martin and Stacey getting back together, that might be the catalyst that makes that happen. I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe will be the thing that pushes Ravi? Stacey into Ravi's arms. Exactly. To his big, manly, muscly, best covered Ooh. arms. <laughs> Rough. Lovely, lovely face. Rough. Yes, no, I, 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 I'd completely, I'd completely forgotten about that too. Um, and as you say, stay, uh, he's very much family. Everything in the East End is his family and all that lot. So to have that mm. secret kept from him is is not great. Um, but just, yeah, just plugging myself in, Alex. Just fill. Sorry, Rob, you go plug yourself in. Uh, why why you're doing in. that? I'm just going to remind everyone that next week we are not going to have an episode of the podcast. <sighs> what a week for us not to be doing it. Honestly, Alex. But I'm sorry, but life gets in the way sometimes. But the following week, so in two weeks' time, bumper. we will be doing a bumper episode. So, uh, you know, set it in your diary that on Saturday, the 17th of September, there is going to be a big bumper episode where we're going to talk Massive. about two whole weeks. Massive. Of we're not going to try and squeeze two weeks' material into, into an hour. We are going to just talk about two weeks' worth of these standards. And Alex yeah. is going to be editing it for days. And it serves you right for putting himself in this situation, I say. But That's I will something. say, if Rob. Well, we'll give you all the details of how you can find us and all that. But I strongly recommend that you do follow us on all the social medias, uh, Twitter and all that, Facebook, um, because we, you know, we, we'll we still be giving our opinion throughout the week. And we may be able to just sneak in perhaps uh, a way of, you know, doing something in between those two weeks. Nothing concrete, though. But, you know, what is concrete is that we will be back on Saturday, the 17th of September for a bumper two week waxing lyrical talking nonsense as as much as we can about the whole flashback, the wedding, what All Billy it. doing, the Panasars, the Carters, the Janines, the Lindas, the everything. We're going to talk about everything in two weeks' time. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now and let Rob do what he does ever so well, and that is tell you how you can get in touch with us. You can contact us on Twitter and Instagram at Wolford Weekly. You can find us on Facebook at Wolford Weekly Podcast and YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell to get notifications about anything we might happen to post. And you can find us on Apple, Podbean, Spotify or any of your favourite podcast sites. Please do email us at robwolfordweekly at gmail.com or at alexwolfordweekly at gmail.com. Ah, oh, so Alex, until the 18th. And bear in mind, know. obviously, Alex will have a whole new recording place. If you were, if you watch us instead of listen, Alex, a whole new background. What will it look like? How exciting! Uh, will it work? <laughs> will there be echoes? Will we be back <laughs> will on the, the internet? 18th? Cut out. Who knows? <laughs> will, yeah, will I just give up the will to live and just find myself do an Ian Beale and just wander off somewhere and not come back for six months? Sort of I'll wander off towards the above. tube in your slippers. Who knows yeah. what might happen? <laughs> so I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it greatly. We will be a sort of online voice over the over the next week, so we still will be around. But you, like Alex says, we tune in on Saturday, on Saturday the 18th of September for our big bumper return, which we will talk yeah. all things EastEnders, two weeks worth, all in one massive episode. Whoop, whoop, Bring whoop, it whoop, whoop. on. Lovely. Until then, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. See y'all.